One of the calligrapher's key tools is ink. The Chinese invented ink around 1500 BC. It consisted of equal parts glue and soot. Today, the basic material in ink is carbon black. Other tools of the calligrapher are primarily pens and brushes. These tools allow the artist to create a wide variety of scripts. A reed or quill cut to perfection was the standard for centuries. The Declaration of Independence and Constitution of the United States of America were lettered using vellum and Yorkshire goose quills. The style of writing is a cross between copperplate and other popular scripts of the 18th century. Jacob Chalice earned $30 as the calligrapher of the Constitution and had only 40 hours to complete the task. The metal pens used today were only invented 200 years ago in America. This allowed for the easy interchange of many nib styles. The angle of the hand and pen are important in creating the various script styles. However, the pen angle determines the character of the letter. I use everything from traditional broad-edged metal nibs to flat brushes to cut up aluminum cans formed into a pen to bamboo. So there, there's really a variety of things. Some calligraphers use the round rough stencil brushes to make their marks and um, so really anything you can imagine. Whatever the mind can, can conceive, you know, you can really use. The modern rise in interest with calligraphy began a little over 100 years ago. Edward Johnston revived the waning interest in calligraphy as a teacher at the Royal College of Art in England. It was the Carolingian hand which Edward Johnston at the beginning of the 20th century took as his model for his basic foundational hand considered best for starting calligraphy. However, his most recognizable work is seen in London where he designed the underground typeface for the subway system. Johnston's students introduced his style to Germany where another calligrapher, Rudolf Koch, was developing his own hand. Koch taught a workshop in his native Offenbach. He felt that the revival of calligraphy would come from new ideas other than the study of historical forms. This time period produced a large quantity of inspired work. Elizabeth Wilson received her training in Hanover, Germany at the Hanover Arts and Crafts School. Elizabeth's master teacher and professor was Friedrich Heinrichsen, a student of Rudolf Koch. She came to the United States as an immigrant in 1951 and worked as a commercial artist in Chicago. She moved to San Diego, California five years later where she continued her calligraphy and began teaching at several colleges and universities in the San Diego area. Elizabeth remembers the revival of the interest in calligraphy that began in the 1960s. While First Lady Jackie Kennedy was in the White House, her use of calligraphy spurred interest in the art of beautiful writing throughout the United States. She kept them busy lettering invitations, lettering the White House menus, doing envelopes and place cards and all the things that calligraphers do. And these things were publicized in some of the leading magazines. That's how I found out about it. And then a lot of colleges became interested in it because all of a sudden there was a demand. People started calling about classes. The White House still employs a staff of calligraphers who primarily produce invitations and menus. The primary style used is copper plate that closely resembles engraving. The service they provide is relatively new. Only since the late 1900s have there been calligraphers working in the White House. Prior to this, the secretaries performed the calligraphic tasks. Technology has changed calligraphy for better or worse. However, some things an artist can do cannot be easily accomplished by a computer, such as creating flourishes. Flourishes are curve lines that sweep away from the letter. The flourishes and font style variations cannot be done very well on a computer. One of the things that I know as far as uh, the computer and calligraphy is concerned is that 
uh, there are certain little nuances that happen with the hand-formed letter that they have not been able to do yet with uh, a, a computer-type program. Uh, there are people who are working at this currently, and, uh, and I, I would imagine at some point in the future they may be able to get to a point where they can replicate some of the things that we do with the handwritten letter. The fonts that are used today in technology are developed by people who are doing lettering and design by hand in order to get that font. Um, all of those things, I think, play a part into um, what you're going to do. The, the limitation of technology and the limitation of a font is um, all, of the, all of the letters, to some extent, have to be the same. Um, and so where the hand-done calligraphy differs from the technology is that I can choose to um, do a B differently in the middle of this word than I do in the middle of that word, whereas a font, it will be uniform. Elizabeth Wilson recalls a project that showcased the benefits of using computer technology and calligraphy together to create greeting cards. She was commissioned by a large computer manufacturer to create designs for a custom interactive software program. The first step for these greeting cards was to do it all by hand in different styles, using different nibs. Then I turned it back over to the people who commissioned me to do this, and they made it fit for a computer image. They provided the different captions to go with the illustrations. So people would have a choice. They could take number one, two, three, or four and choose from that whatever they saw fit what they wanted to say and what they wanted to have on their greeting card. The blending of calligraphy into a fine art form has accelerated. But when I look at history, for example, I, I see letter forms attached to fine art. Uh, if you look at the illuminations uh, that were done, you see tremendous amount of fine art attached to calligraphy. I think we're really, in a sense, coming around in a circle now to where, once again, we're seeing letter forms, in some cases, being attached to fine art again. Calligraphy is truly the art of the written word and so much more. The art of today's calligraphers with their distinctive styles and techniques gives this art form new inspiration. Calligraphy will continue to surround us in many new ways, and the future ideas are unlimited. Music